This experience literally just happened earlier this morning. To give some context, I'm a 28-year-old female and I currently live in a small town in Missouri. I live in a slightly run-down, not horrible, but more like mid-grade apartment complex with my roommate and Corgi. Every morning, my alarm goes off at 4am so I can get ready for my hour commute into St. Louis for school. The first thing I always do is walk my dog so that she can relieve herself before the drive. She's a service dog, so she follows me around pretty much everywhere and is generally good about doing her business pretty quickly. Now, the way our apartment complex is set up, there are roughly 13 buildings along a long lane, each with roughly six individual units going down the incline of the paved way. At the top of the lane is a little area for kids. It has a play area that has one of those things that looks like a treehouse, but is hooked up to a slide and a few other things to entertain munchkins. It's right next to our mailboxes, so sometimes I let Tabitha play with the kids while I check the mail and chat with my neighbours. Normally when we take our morning walks, however, it's abandoned. And understandably so, since it's pretty damn early in the morning. This morning, I figured it would be no different. Tabitha decided to relieve herself closer to it than normal, so I decided to look around idly while waiting for her to finish. Nine times out of ten, she's a very sociable and loving wiggle butt. I joke that she doesn't meet a stranger anywhere and would probably even give Hitler love. The girl's seriously happy as long as someone's willing to pet her and has barked all of two times in the two and a half years I've met her. So when I heard her begin growling and snarling, it broke me out of my half-awake days. I froze when I saw what was causing her to tense. In the play area, I saw the outline of a fully grown man crouched down, silhouetted against one of the street lamps. His large eyes were watching us carefully. We don't have a homelessness problem. We're a little too far outside of the city, so this took me by surprise, and at the same time, made me terrified. After a moment of silence, he began to hiss and slowly stand up as far as he could without banging his head against the wooden roof of the play area. Move along 12C. My apartment number. Fuck. This caused Tabitha to begin going nuts. In hindsight, she reminded me of a squirrel on meth. Basically a tiny dog with the attitude of a giant. Without so much as giving him a second glance, I yanked on her leash and began bolting towards my apartment, shaking. As soon as I let her off of her leash inside, she stood vigilant at the locked doorway, teeth bared. I like to think I would have called for help, even if the thought of my complex's kids hadn't crossed my mind. But I can't make the promise that I would have. One of my friend's dad is a cop that lives less than five minutes away, and he was my immediate call when I was able to make coherent speech patterns. He told me to wait inside until he told me it was okay to leave. He and his partner, who was working a late shift that night, came out to investigate the area. By then, the man had bolted. However, they found footprints around the area, along with needles and some cut up lengths of rope. Needless to say, my morning walks are going to be a lot more guarded now.